Hello, and thank you for tuning in and spending some time with me today. You are listening to The Financial Chick Show, and I am The Financial Chick. My name is Denise Snowstrom, the CEO and owner of Diversified Financial Solutions, a full-service, independent financial planning firm located in Medford. Your Financial Chick is here to help you make better financial decisions and choices to improve your life and reduce your anxiety and stress about money. If you want to know more about me or my firm, you can check out my website at financialchickshow.com. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram at Diversified Financial Solutions. So like those pages and see what's happening. If you missed a show or want to listen to a show already aired, you can go to the media tab on the website and listen to all prior shows and the topics are there to kind of hone in on the topics that are of an interest to you. So, um, I guess raise your hand. <laughs> I, know, I can't see you, but um, who is absolutely exhausted? Um, I'd have to raise my hand up. Oh, my engineer, Anthony, just raised his hand too. So he and I are on the same page. Um, really, this is the time of year. Uh, you can really, it really knocks you out. I mean, there's just way too much to uh, think about. Uh, I'm typically a night owl, so um, the fact that I'm falling asleep on the couch by like eight, nine o'clock really speaks volumes about what's happening right now. Like I said, there's so much to think about and so much to do at this time of year. It just takes a whole lot out of you. Um, I did take some time on Saturday, however, to get a massage to decompress. Um, everyone really needs to take a step back, maybe take a walk, maybe a massage, maybe a pedicure, um, maybe just work on, on, on the truck or the car. If you're whatever really kind of blows your hair back, you should do it. But to walk away from the craziness just to keep your insanity. But what's really funny about that massage, most likely I probably would not have done it because I, I actually bought a gift certificate for myself as I was buying gifts for people last December. Um, I bought one for myself because it was a good price. And the only freaking reason why I went <laughs> was that it was, um, it was expiring. So I made time for myself, which I'm kind of glad. So it was kind of happenstance that I, I went there, but um, I'm glad I did because I probably wouldn't have did it otherwise. So again, another busy week. On Monday, my nonprofit women's organization, Power of Women Exchanging Resources, had an event at AR Workshop in Patchogue. We made a chunky blanket. And I have to say that I have very little to no skills in sewing or really just creative things. I'm, I'm the financial chick, so it's numbers and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I have to say my blanket came out really good. Like it, it's so soft and warm. And, and honestly, it was really kind of therapeutic because it really got me away from the whole financial stuff and, and, and Christmas cards and, and the, the shopping, all that kind of stuff. It kind of took, you took a step away. Again, another way you can give yourself some sanity. So, um, and in addition, we love to support our women-owned small businesses. So a big shout out to Liz at AR Workshop in Patchogue on South Ocean Avenue. She is so sweet and so helpful. Um, so if you want to do a personalized project like a blanket or a wood sign or anything like that, she's your girl. So check her out and check out her shop, AR Workshop. The busy week continued with a holiday luncheon um, with an organization that I'm on the board of, Society of Financial Service Professionals. That was on Tuesday. So that was kind of a nice, uh, a nice thing to, to take a step away and to enjoy um, a holiday party. When you have a small office, you know, there's really no holiday parties, although me and my staff do go out for lunch. Um, then on Wednesday, I had my annual compliance meeting. Part of being a financial advisor is to make sure that we're doing all the right things for all of you out there and to see what's new and what's happening, uh, you know, topics being, um, you know, uh, hacking and, and, and how to help our clients to, to not have that happen or happen to, to us and just all, all different things. It was a whole bunch of topics. So that's an annual thing that we had on Wednesday. Uh, on Thursday, I was out of the office all day visiting clients in New Jersey. And this is all while training my new administrative assistant, Laura. So it's been certainly a crazy and busy week, but uh, it's been a pretty productive one. So uh, I'm pretty excited and the vibe in the office is, is pretty exciting. Laura actually and Brian, my staff, uh, we're in the office yesterday and apparently listening to Christmas music and they decorated the entire office So it looks really good. I'm gonna uh, take some video or, or some pictures um, This weekend and I'll, I'll post that so you can see how nice the office is if you don't have a chance to come into the office So uh, today was also interesting I had to bring my daughter and her girlfriend who slept over last night to the train station at 7 o'clock this morning They had a field trip in New York City uh, She has been involved in the fashion program at her high school 
And uh, so this is what she was doing today. I just wanted to share this with you because it's just great to know, you know, I talk to a lot of clients and they say, gosh, you know, everybody talks about, you know, all practical information that the kids don't learn about financial stuff and, and about careers. And I have to say, Patrick Medford really takes the lead um, in that arena. So this is the annual um, fashion field trip to New York City. So. When they uh, got to New York City, they, they, they walked to H&M for a tour, and that's a, a clothing store, and then they went to um, LIM College for a tour, and they were able to meet the college faculty, which is amazing. So these are students from ninth grade to senior year, so it, it, it's really a great eye-opening uh, opportunity for these kids. Then they took a walk to Radio City Music Hall to take a backstage tour. Now, how many of us have done that? So what a very cool thing for uh, kids to do, you know, young adults to do, to, to have that opportunity. Then after the backstage tour, they were walking to Hard Rock Cafe in Times Square for lunch. And then after lunch, they were going to, to uh, Macy's and Herald Square uh, to do some shopping and to check out their fashions and, and all of that. So really hands-on teaching which which I think is great and 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 I'll, I'll have a big shout out to Mr. Smiloff. I, I do a lot of work with the high school. I have in, I have an intern actually starting on Monday and uh, to teach that these are children or, or young adults that are looking to get into the financial field. So I bring them in my office and I teach them all about uh, the career that, that I've selected in, in my life and if it's something that they'd be interested in doing. And um, I'm going to be up at the school on Tuesday and they have uh, a lot of business community leaders go to the school and we try to help them improve their, their um, programs. So they have an accounting program, they have a financial program, they have the fashion program, um, I think the sports marketing. So it's really neat and it's really wonderful that they do all this and, and we know that it's something that, uh, that really needs to happen. So, um, you know, kind of segueing into uh, back to business. I mean, I've done a lot of non-business stuff this week, but uh, there was a whole lot of business stuff that was in there. And, and honestly, um, I'm a bit tired because I've been working uh, in the evenings, training during the day, and then, uh, you know, trying to catch up on my, on my work uh, in the evening. Not complaining, just saying. It's all good. Uh, and being December, we're just trying to catch up on a lot of stuff at the end of the year. So in meeting with my clients and speaking with my clients um, on the phone, their biggest concern right now is how are my accounts doing and when is this market going to get better? I mean, you know, let's face it, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. Uh, the market's been going up and down like crazy. You know, we're hearing about the Fed meeting and inflation going up and your food costs. And, you know, one, I guess, bright light, I always try to keep it on the positive, is that we did have um, the price of oil go down. So that's going to help a little bit to, um, well, help us when we fill up our car, but hopefully that will filter down and trickle down into uh, the different products and services that we need, you know, whether it be food or clothing, because again, that stuff's brought by trucks. Uh, I know, well, um, diesel fuels come down, but not quite as much as, as, as the regular fuel that we have in our, our vehicles and stuff like that. So, um, so in an article today that I read, uh, according to Bloomberg, they're warning that 2023 um, may be a bit ugly and that there's some bumpy times ahead and it could be a rude awakening. Now, you know, we, we've kind of been talking about this for a while or the, the, the market's been very, very good for a very long time. I mean, we've had some dips, but overall the market's been very positive. So with the Federal Reserve, you know, and the warnings that there, there or the, the increases in the, the rates, there's some warnings that next year, uh, the outlook for the U.S. economy and stocks is grim. Now, of course, stay with me because, um, you know, opinions are like, you know what, um, everybody has them. So, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at a, you know, mild to hard recession, you know, at, according to Jamie Dimon from J.P. Morgan Chase. And, um, you know, we're, we're really looking at the earnings of corporations. So there's been a lot of things that have been happening that uh, are affecting our companies. So... Um, I'm going to cut that short for now. We're going to finish that after the break, but we're running into the break. But you are listening to the Financial Chick Show, and I am the Financial Chick, Denise Nostrom. The company is Diversified Financial Solutions. I help you look for financial solutions when you feel like there are none. So feel free to contact me at 631-758-8691 or at financialchickshow.com. So we're closing in on the break, but stay tuned. There's so much more.
Yes, Anthony. <laughs> yeah. Poverty. poverty. No, we're not going to go in. We're, it's not going to be poverty. It's about being strategic. So that, I, I should sell drugs and do drugs. You're not going to sell drugs, Anthony. That's not a good plan B. There are other plan Bs, but that's not a good one. We want to keep you out of the clink. You know what I mean? I can, I can. <laughs> I know you are. So, yes, so here we are. I, I kind of got on a bit late uh, tonight. Uh, it's been a crazy week, and I'm just running around like a lunatic, but um, I, I'm here to live to tell about it. But, um, yeah, so thank you for uh, tuning in. Like I said, I don't have my phone set up, so I have no idea who's on here. So whoever's on here, thank you for showing up. I'll see who's on here later. And, um, yeah, so uh, there'll be more stuff that hopefully I can uh, unwind for you and uh, make you feel a little bit more at peace with this crazy market and crazy economy that we have going on. And I've got one minute, so we're going to get back to this party. What were you trying to tell me before? What's that? What were you trying to tell me before? Oh, it sounded a little crackly in the beginning. Oh, uh, yeah, it's probably just the wires. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So, and you know, that, that was the thing. I was looking at, um, at my phone to like tell you I was here. I don't even know. Like, I, I have no idea where you're. Oh, you, okay. Now I have you. Okay. Oh. I couldn't. All right. It was you. I have a few Anthony's. I'm like, I was like, okay. I was on a dress. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> no worries. Just, just, I, like I was saying, Adele, go easy on me till I get through this crazy <laughs> time. Also, I had no idea you were live streaming. <laughs> I would have not made a crack comment. It's all right. My, my, my people are good. They don't care. <laughs> Let's hope so. We're all good. Welcome back. This is Denise Snowstrom, the financial chick. My company is in Medford, and you can reach me at 631-758-8691 or visit my website at financialchickshow.com. I am here to help you on your financial journey. Over the years, things change, and I'm here to help you navigate all those changes. And by gosh, do things change. It feels like things change um, really on the hourly basis, or, or definitely daily, that's for sure. Complicated. So before the break, we were talking about uh, the fact that Wall Street is you know, kind of saying that uh, they're warning that 2023 might be a bit ugly. You know, we've got everything, all the stage is set, uh, that uh, that could certainly be the case. We have, um, well, we have inflation, you know, we have uh, things costing more, we have uh, rates going up, you know, we have the war in Ukraine. I mean, the wall of worry is there. There's a bunch of different things that uh, that are taking place. I don't think it's the end of, all, of it all, um, but just like anything, you know, we're going to have the ups and down, up and down years, but let's kind of unpack some of this stuff and, and let's try to, to make some sense out of the sanity. All right, so like I said, JP Morgan's is, is, is kind of have a grim view saying that we're going to have a mild to hard recession and, um, you know, we don't, we don't think that the, the conditions, or he's saying the conditions are, are, are ready for a sustained upturn, they're not in place just yet. You know, even though we've had a tough market this year, I mean, the, the market hit it high on January 4th and just continued to go down. And we had a little bit of, a, of, a, of an uptick in August. But then when you got your statements on September 30th, that happened to be the worst day of the year. So that was in, embroiled in, in, in your head. And it was very interesting. I had three meetings yesterday and everybody knew their number from September 30th. So when I showed them what their accounts were now, we, we were up about seven or eight percent, believe it or not, on an average. It could be some clients a little bit more, depending on their invested. But just from September 30th to present moment, you know, we were up not double digit, but close to double digits. So things change quite quickly. So um, you know, what we've seen investors over the past two months that the S and P has fallen, and uh, in, in, you know, in, in the last eight sessions, it's only been up one of those uh, sessions. So there's red flags, you know, in the wake of like wage and service data that's suggesting that inflationary forces still grip the economy and that should continue into the new year. So one of the other things that's a big problem that we're hearing a lot of right now is the layoffs. Uh, that's part of the doom and gloom. Um, on Tuesday, Morgan Stanley announced that they're going to reduce their global workforce by 2000 ahead of the potential U.S. recession. So again, we don't really know that, I mean, honestly, I think we're in a recession right now, but you know, they're 
media is still saying that we're not and that we're going to get into one. But um, you know, most of these companies, they're doing things before we really know what happens. So that could be a good plan, could be a bad plan. Again, until it plays out, we're really not going to know. Uh, Bank of America has come out and said that they were slowing hiring. Uh, tech companies have already been slashing their workforce. Now, they got a whole different situation going on. Things like Twitter, Meta, which was, of course, Facebook, um, to Amazon, they're, they're uh, trimming their staff and slowing hiring because they're dealing with the higher interest rates and a pullback in consumer spending. So most tech companies or small companies, and not necessarily that these are small, but uh, tech companies, they leverage or, or they, they borrow money to keep the ball rolling, whether it's to hire people or to buy products and services or for, for uh, research and development, whatever it is, or marketing. So when interest rates go up, which they have quite a, quite a big deal, from 0.25 up to 4% on the Fed Fund's target rate, which really determines what rates are, uh, companies can't borrow at a cheap price. I mean, they've been able to borrow really cheap money for like the longest time. So that's not happening anymore. So the companies are feeling that pinch. But then on the other side, I always go the good, the bad, but we won't do any ugly today. But that was the bad. The good is that uh, Charles Schwab, is saying that they think the economy will improve in the latter part of next year, and um, you know that there's growing evidence that you know after inflation starts easing and uh, the labor market cools off, that that will fuel some market optimism. I, in my humble opinion, I believe that's really what we're going to see. You know, we're going into the new the new year, and uh, a lot of the stuff is going to kind of get unpacked. You know, the the Fed is it hopefully you know stops increasing rates. And um, you know we have a pause in that. As soon as we know, the problem is it's uncertainty. When, when think of it in your own life, when there's things uncertain, you feel anxiety and you feel stress. But when you kind of have a, you feel like you have a, a good handle on things, you can accept things a little bit more. Right now, the Fed's not really saying a lot. We're, they're going to meet next week. Most likely, they're going to increase rates. Maybe we'll get some guidance as to what they're going to do. But when we don't know what's going on, again, you feel you feel fear, you feel anxiety. So once we get some answers there, we'll be in better shape. The Ukraine war could end. That, an incident like that could basically change everything and make the market go uh, do well. So all of these different things, you know, it, it, it's just sticking with the program and just letting things play out, but being proactive instead of reactive. I'm meeting with clients right now. We're making some adjustments in the portfolio. You know, the thing is, is that we have a weaker economy, a weaker labor, but the thing is, is that we've got to get through the bad stuff to get to the good stuff. So let's take a look at some other things. So while the American, the American economy, while stronger than most other developed countries, we talk about we're going to appear to going toward a recession and that with the high inflation and rising interest rates. But the thing to remember is that recessions are inevitable. And where they, why they happen is that they clear out the market excesses and they set the stage for future growth. We just went through this pandemic where everything was turned upside down. You know, everybody was, was so excited about the, the sexy stuff. You know, they were looking at Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, like they couldn't get enough of that. And they really forgot about the basics of investing and looking at companies that are stable and have a track record. Um, you know, I know I've talked about this, but you know, cryptocurrency, like, whoa, that's, that's great, let's do that. You know, if you got in at the height, you're down 80%. You know, it's, it's just, you really just need to focus in on what your goals are and then make sure that you're, um, you know, taking right steps. And that's why you work with a financial advisor. I mean, you do your own thing, you're working, you're taking care of the kids, maybe taking care of parents. You don't have time to be on the pulse of the market. So work with somebody who does this, you know, day in and day out to help you take one thing off your plate. And that's something that we say, if you go to my website, you know, we, we take things off the plate so you can do the things that you enjoy in your life. So there are five investment themes that to consider for the new year. So let's quickly run through these. Um, stocks will likely turn positive before the economy. So the economy could get worse, but the market could definitely get better before that happens. And, and that's typically how it plays out. So take the emotion out of it. Don't be like, I gotta get out of the market. That's usually not a good way to do it. Don't invest on emotion, invest on facts and figures. Dividends matter again. I just alluded to that. You know, people are so excited. Oh, the growth, you know, uh, of, of uh, Tesla or uh, Facebook or real pure growth stocks that don't pay a dividend. Get back to the companies that do. Companies like Con Edison, companies like your, your oil companies or uh, Procter & Gamble, blue chip 
they matter again and you know what that's something that you can you can hang your hat on even if the market is volatile you're going to be getting that dividend number three look for new market leadership to emerge this is always something that happens when the market is is bad innovation takes over so that's going to be a big uh, thing that's going to be in play Number four, growth investing may depend on earnings. So growth investing really took, took control. There's growth and value. Growth has been, an, in, it has been the leader. Value really hasn't, it's been underperforming. But growth will still be something you want part of your portfolio, but it depends on the earnings. So really select companies that are gonna do well and, and have a good balance sheet, very, very important. And finally, prepare for a potential industrial renaissance. Now that sounds so exciting, but um, you know, with the, I'll give you one quote here that was really kind of interesting, that in 2030, they estimated that over 1 billion people worldwide will suffer from obesity, which is linked to cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease, I'm running out of time, so I'm speeding now, diabetes and kidney failure. So companies like Eli Lilly are investing heavily in those therapies to now innovate and to help people to help themselves that you know to overcome these these various things that are that are happening so what i'm trying to say is it's not the end it's only the beginning but it's important to meet with me or your advisor to make sure you know the thing is is that you know you don't have time you really need to have somebody that's going to help you break through that and give you the peace that you need to kind of not worry about your money, you have a whole lot more to worry about. So remember, let's do better, be better, have a fantastic weekend, and don't do too much with the shopping and everything. I just, I'm looking forward to doing some relaxing. But you've been listening to The Financial Chick Show. I will see you next Friday. Enjoy your weekend. So yeah, it's always like a half hour show and um, some days I feel like I don't have enough material and some days I just feel like I have too much material, but a little race at the, at the end there. But thank you again for tuning in. Um, I look forward to uh, being with you again next Friday. Take care. Enjoy the weekend.